Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on anal cancer. Anal cancer is a relatively rare cancer of the gastrointestinal tract, accounting for around 4% of colorectal cancers. The majority of anal cancers are squamous cell carcinomas, arising from below the dentate line. The remaining 10% are adenocarcinomas, which arise from the upper anal canal epithelium and the crypt glands. A precancerous condition, anal intraepithelial neoplasia, may precede the development of invasive squamous anal carcinoma. The risk factors for developing anal cancer include HPV infection. This accounts for 80 to 90% of cases, especially HPV 16 and HPV 18. Other risk factors are HIV infection, increasing age, smoking, immunosuppression, or Crohn's disease. The main symptoms of anal cancer are rectal pain or rectal bleeding, occurring in around half of patients. Other symptoms may include anal discharge, pruritus, or the presence of a palpable mass. Perianal infection and fistula in anyo can be seen in locally invasive disease. If the anal sphincters have been involved, fecal incontinence and tenesmus can also occur. On examination, the perineal and perianal regions should be screened for any ulceration or the presence of ward-like lesions. Any mass felt on PR exam should be documented along with its distance from the anal verge and the proportion of anal circumference involved. The inguinal lymph nodes should be examined for any lymphadenopathy. Lymph from the area below the dentate line drains to the superficial inguinal nodes, whereas the anal canal and rectum above the dentate line drain into the mesorectal, paraaortic, and paravertebral nodes. For differential diagnosis, the main benign differentials include hemorrhoids, anal fissure, fistula in anio, and anal warts, whilst malignant disease differentials include a low rectal cancer or a skin cancer. Following initial examination, proctoscopy should be performed to obtain a better initial assessment of the anal canal. All patients with suspected anal cancer should then undergo examination under anesthesia. An EUA allows for much better assessment for tumor size and invasion of local structures as well as allowing a biopsy to be taken for histological confirmation. For women, a pap smear test should be done to screen for cervical or vulval intraepithelial neoplasia, which can further progress into cervical or vulval cancer. HIV tests should also be considered. Once the diagnosis has been confirmed by biopsy, further staging investigations are required. Ultrasound-guided fine needle aspiration of any palpable inguinal lymph nodes should be done. CT thorax abdomen pelvis for distant metastasis. An MRI pelvis to assess the extent of local invasion. For tumor staging. For treatment. A multidisciplinary approach must be used in the management of anal cancer. Including oncologists, general surgeons, radiologists, and specialist nurses. Chemoradiotherapy is often the first choice treatment for anal tumors. Except for early disease where wide local excision is enough. Treatment is usually via external beam radiotherapy to the anal canal and inguinal lymph nodes, combined with dual chemotherapy agents, such as mitomycin C and 5-fluorouracil. Surgical excision is usually reserved for management of advanced disease, after failure of chemoradiotherapy, or in early-stage carcinomas. The majority of patients requiring surgical intervention will receive an abdominoperineal resection. Yet for some a posterior or total pelvic excenteration is required. Patients should be reviewed every three to six months for a period of two years. Most recurrences occur in the first three years following surgery, and will tend to relapse locally and regionally, rather than have spread distant. Next we will look at the complications of anal cancer. Chemoradiation-related pelvic toxicity is the most common short-term complication which can present with dermatitis, diarrhea, proctitis, or cystitis. For longer term, patients may develop fertility issues, fecal incontinence, vaginal dryness, erectile dysfunction, and rectovaginal fistula. The prognosis is related to the initial staging of the tumor. This table shows the five-year survival rate of patients who had anal cancer. The earlier stage when it was diagnosed and treated, the higher the rate of five-year survival. That's all for this video. Thank you.